In this video, you will learn to use Godot signals. As we saw in a previous lesson, this feature allows nodes to communicate with one another. For example, I can click a button to toggle the character's motion. We'll connect this signal using the editor's interface, which is the first method we can use to connect signals. Then we'll use another approach through code. They are complementary and you need to learn both. This will allow us to make the character blink like you can see on the screen. Finally, we'll dive into another scene that I've prepared for you where we have a character hitting another and we want to update the life bar. To do so, we'll define a custom signal and emit it via code. This video is part of a complete free series to get started with Godot in 2021. To watch it from the start, you can find a link in the description. There are two more complete step-by-step -step game creation tutorials coming in the series, so to not miss anything, be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. With that, let's get started. To follow along, you will need to download a starter project. I put a link to it in the description below. You have to click on usingsignals.zip to download the archive. Then you head to the folder where you downloaded it. I'm going to right click and extract the archive here, something I can do to unzip it. We then want to import this project in Godot. So I'm going to press Ctrl L here to get the path to the directory move to a new workspace and open Godot. You then want to click the import button, paste the project path and import and edit it. All right, so let me run you through it very quickly. Custom signals is the scene with the life bar, player and enemy I showed you. We'll use it towards the end of this video. Toggle motion contains the rotating Godot head that we created in the previous tutorial where you created your first script. We'll use it to connect our signals. We're going to start with that. So we're going to create a new scene by going to scene, new scene, and it's going to be a 2D scene. I name it toggle motion and save it on my drive here as togglemotion.tscn. In this scene, we're going to create an instance of our Godot head, turning Godot head. So you can click and drag it anywhere onto the scene. It gets added a bit far down, so we're going to move it back to the center here, a bit to the left because it's doing circles. And from there, we're going to select toggle motion and add a button node. So I'll click the add button, look for the button node and press enter. It's a bit difficult to see, a little thing gets added in the top left of the scene. So with the button selected and the select tool on, you can click and drag on the bottom right little icon here to expand it. You can then click and drag on the button to move it away from the top left corner of the viewport. In the inspector, you can see it has a text property, so we'll set it to toggle motion. That's our scene setup to toggle the character's motion. So currently, when I click the button, nothing happens. The character keeps turning. We want to tell the Godot head when we click the button to toggle its motion on and off. To do so, we use a signal and the button comes with plenty of them. So select the button node and on the right side, next to the inspector, there's a node tab which is split into two, signals and groups. So we're going to stay on signals to see the list of signals available to the node. It's pretty long because every node, as it inherits from parent classes, object, node, canvas item, etc., also inherits all the properties and signals of those parent classes. Each of them is an event that will get emitted every time something specific happens. For example, if we look at the base button around the top, you have the signals button down, button up, pressed, toggle. Uh, pressed gets emitted whenever you click the button or with the button highlighted in blue like that, you press enter, for example. And so we can connect this signal to our good head to make it react to it. So with the button selected, you're going to I have the double click pressed or select the press signal and click the connect button. Then you get this menu that helps you by telling you which nodes have a script attached to them. You'll see here you're unable to select nodes other than Godot. 
because we need a receiver method or function that's going to be called by the engine when the signal is emitted. By default, it will have this convention underscore on underscore name of the node, so button, underscore name of the signal. This helps you know which node emitted the signal and which signal it was. Now you can click connect, which opens the script editor with the new function, underscore on button pressed. Note that you have a bit of code that comes from the previous lesson, which is why we're not re-explaining it. Now this function is empty. It only has the pass keyword that just tells do nothing to the GDScript compiler. We're going to replace that to toggle the character's motion because this is what we want to do upon pressing the button. To do so, our nodes have a function to turn the callback to process on and off. It's called set underscore process. So you can erase this line and call set underscore process. It takes a value either true or false. Bool means Boolean, which is either true or false. So if you say true, it's going to turn on processing. If you say false, it turns it off. So you can enter false and press F6 to play the current scene. When you click the button, the character stops. When you click it again, it doesn't start because we're always setting processing to false. We can use an expression to toggle it. We have another function which tells us whether or not the node is currently processing. It's called is underscore processing. So we're going to call it, it has parentheses because it's a function that's going to return true or false. Now we can negate that. So if it is processing, we turn it off. If it is not, we turn it on by using the not keyword with a space before the function call. So we set process to the opposite of the current processing state. And when you do that, you can click the button to toggle the motion on and off. I'll just mention that set process is safe to call. It just turns a flag, a Boolean value, on and off on the node that Godot looks up to decide whether or not it's going to call this process function. Okay, so that was connecting a signal using the editor. Now we're going to do that, but using code. And to do so, we're going to add a new node as a child of our Godot instance. So let's create a new timer node. This is a timer that has a waiting time and that cycles every uh, one second in this case. And if you look at its node tab, it has a signal named timeout. So it emits a signal whenever it times out by default every one second. Of course, we could connect it via the editor, but we're going to do it in the script. So click the script icon next to the Godot bot, and we're going to connect to the node's timeout signal. We'll make the character blink. Okay, so first we need a place to connect it, and we're going to introduce a new function called ready. So write the fun keyword underscore ready. This one gets called by Godot whenever you start running the scene. I'm not going to give you all the details, but it allows you to initialize the nodes to set them up like connecting a signal via code. Okay, then we have two steps that we need to follow. First, we need to get a reference to our timer in the code. So we need to tell the script, get access to the timer node. Okay, so to do so, I'm going to store the node timer in a variable. So I'll write var timer, I'm going to set it equal to, there's a function called get underscore node to get access to a node, and it takes a path relative to the current node. So dot means the Godot node, because the Godot node has the script attached to it, and timer stands for the timer node. Then we're going to call the connect method on the timer node. This is a method you have on every object in Godot that you can use to connect a signal. We need to call it on the timer. So we write timer dot to access the timer's functions, connect, and you can press enter. The autocompletion gives you a list of all the signals on the timer node. We want to connect to the timeout signal. Then we have to give it a target to connect to. So when we're using the interface, we could double click the Godot node. Now we have to use code to do that. So we're going to add a comma and we're going to write self. 
self stands for this node the script is attached to. In this case, it's our Godot node. Then we add another comma and we need to give it a function to call. Again, you remember on the interface, we had the on button pressed method called for us. Here, we're going to create a new one. So add some quotes and we're going to name it following the same convention, underscore on, underscore timer, underscore timeout, which is the name of the signal. And you can copy that name because we need to create the function now. And at the bottom of the script, add a new function with a fun keyword, on timer timeout, parentheses, and the colon at the end. And here we're going to do something similar to what we did here. We're going to toggle the character's visibility. So we can say visible equals not visible. This is how you toggle a Boolean value. If the character is visible, it's going to become invisible and vice versa. Now we have one last step to do. It's that our timer does not start by itself unless you tell it to. So select the timer node and check the auto start checkbox. So it starts and the time runs. You can now press F6 to play the game and you will see the character blink. It's a bit slow because the wait time is one second. So we can lower it to 0.4 to see the thing happen a bit faster. Here is one last tip. It's that when you call the get node function in the code, uh, we pass the name timer. Now I want to stress that this is the name of the node in the scene tree. So you can double click any node to rename it. For example, if I call it visibility timer, I have to update my call to get node to say visibility timer. And you can see that the auto completion changed when I was writing the name. In case you forget to do that and you run the game, you will get an error. It's going to say something like um, attempt to call a function or to, to get a property in based null instance on a null instance. This typically means that you are trying to access something that is incorrect, right? When you call get node timer, there's no node named exactly like that timer right now. It's named visibility timer. So you don't get anything. And the value for nothing in code is that null N U double L. And so if I set the name to visibility timer and I play the game again, now it works. Now we can move on to the custom signal scene where we'll create a signal because you have plenty defined by default, but the real power lies in the fact that you can create your own and trust me, you will create plenty of them in your Godot games. So now we want to open the custom signal scene I prepared for you. This scene contains three scene instances, the enemy, that's a character that's uh, moving like that and hitting the player. The player takes some damage and we have a health bar to represent it, but you can see that currently the health is not going down. So we want to create a signal to do that because if you select the player, you can see it already has a signal connected. It's to take damage, to play that little red animation. But if you look at the list of signals, there's nothing that says like took damage or the health went down. And so we want to have a signal to say just that, which the live bar can listen to, to go down. To do so, we're going to click on the player script. So you can see it has a bit of code already. It has a health value that starts at 10. Every time something touches it, so on area entered means something touched this node, which is an area 2D, which detects when something touches it. We're going to call a function named take damage and inflict two damage. The function is right above it. So take damage takes an amount, a number. It's going to subtract that amount to the health variable. Then if the health goes lower than zero, because numbers can go negative, we ensure to set it at a minimum of zero. And we get the animation player node in the player scene. You can't see it here and play the take damage animation. Now we're going to add a signal that will emit whenever the character takes damage. To do so around the top of the script, you're going to write the signal keyword followed by the signal's name. I'm going to call it health changed. There we defined a new signal and we can emit values along with the signal, something we haven't seen yet. 
And here we want to emit either the amount of damage that the character took, or we're going to write an argument in parentheses called new health. We can then emit the signal by calling a function named emit signal. So at the bottom of the take damage function, we're going to call emit underscore signal. The signal may not appear until you save the script, so be sure to do so. And then we're going to scroll to go find health changed. Okay, so we're going to emit health changed, and then you can add a comma to emit the value, the new health. So we're going to um, emit the health variable's value because we subtract it, then we can emit the new value. Once you did that, you can select the player node, and in the node tab, you're going to see the health change signal appears under the player.gd category. We can now double click it to connect it to our life bar. We're going to click connect here, which is going to create a new function on the life bar. You can see that our new health argument gets passed to it. This is just the name for the new health value. So it might be 10, 8, 6, etc. And there in the life bar, this bar, which is something built in, has a property named value, which you can change to lower the bar. So we can say value equals new health. And when we play the game with F6, now the live bar should update. So I'll go down every time the character takes health. And that is it for this video. Now, at this point, you might be wondering what the signals are for, because you have other ways to make node communicates in code. The thing is, this is a very basic scene in Godot. Your game might have thousands of nodes. And so signals will really help you keep your code separate to separate concerns to have the player do something specific, the live bar do something specific, receive some information from the signal, but not directly access the player's code, which helps your code stay bug free and make it scalable. It's a really powerful feature. You'll use it all the time. And we'll see that in next week's video where we'll create a complete 2D game from scratch made by Chris at Kids Can Code for the official Godot documentation. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe. There's going to be more, but also we made a complete free email series, which you can get right now on our website. The link's in the description below. It will teach you extra insights to get started with game development and Godot. Again, completely free. You can unsubscribe anytime. And with that, we'll see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.